Welcome back. It's fantastic to have you here with us tonight, and it's also fantastic to have my first guest with us tonight. As I told you a little bit during the show open, she is a filmmaker, a producer, a writer, a shooter, an adventurer, a sailor, so many things. She has a fantastic tenure, even for her relatively tender years, here at the Sundance <laughs> Film Festival. But she is one busy person, and we're very fortunate to have her roll through Park City more than just one time a year. Producer of films such as the Sundance documentary Pussy Riot, A Punk Prayer, and, and many others, this is my pal, Xenia Grubstein. <laughs> How are you? Hi, Jerry. How's it going? Hi. How are you, girl? Good to, good to see you. Really good to see you. How's it going? How Welcome have you been? Welcome back. I know. This is so funny. I, it, when you said that you were coming back, I was like, right. you know, Zini's never been on the show. I have not. This is perfect. I'm so glad that we have But our, you know, we've met so many times, and you've done things. And that's yeah, right. That's spoken, right. Yeah. We, we, we've hung out tons. What's new with you? I guess maybe for, for folks who aren't familiar with you, maybe give just a little bit of a background. I like on, a recap. On yeah. Your, yeah, recap on your stellar career so far. Oh, oh you're too kind. You're super, super, super kind. Uh, I worked as a journalist for most of my life, as you know, until 2012 when I transitioned to documentary making gradually and associate produced Pussy Riot, A Punk Prayer, which you kindly mentioned. Um, and since then, I've been trying to direct and produce myself and that's where I'm at. I'm at like second and third year respectively of producing and directing two documentaries of which we might probably talk in depth but one of them has a direct connection to um, Park City and that's 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 why I'm here so often because it is on Park City's former mayor Dana Williams. And uh, talk a little bit about, because I remember when, when we first met and you, you told a little bit of the backstory mm -hmm. of how you had met Dana during Sundance right, and you right. were captivated by yes. this larger than life personality <laughs> we all love so much. Talk a little sure bit about was, that experience. Yeah, it was very funny. So I was here with the uh, Pussy Ride documentary and I just went to get some coffee and the person who is serving coffee is like, here you go, by the way, I'm mayor of this town. <laughs> Hi, I'm Dana. And you know, growing up in, in Russia, I was, like, I don't think it's normal. It doesn't happen in Russia. Right. Mayors don't work as, you know, coffee people. Um, so I, I wasn't sure that, you know, he's <laughs> the right person. <laughs> he's telling me the truth. Maybe, like, he's some crazy guy. Um, anyway, as it turned out, he indeed was the acting mayor at that time. Oh, the mayor. Yes, acting yes. Acting mayor, like a sub. Sure. Uh, so he was the mayor. He was fun. He was gregarious, charismatic, amazing. We became friends really quickly, and I also got to watch some of their shows that very Sundance, 2013. Shows as Mother Old Canyon Band, of course. Oh, right, sure, sure. That's right, that was one of the first times that we hung out. We went and saw the Mother Lode Canyon Band at the Spur. That's true. And you were shooting some film by that time. Yeah, exactly. So, you were so, the so since that time I met Dana, we maintained a kind of connection, and every time at Sundance, I would see him and say hi. Until about two years ago, me and my producer just were like, why don't you make a documentary on this guy? He's amazing. We've been inspired by what he does for years. Because my producer, because I've been coming here for a few years, my producer has been here for like a long, long time. He can't, you know, he's in the business. He comes here every year. He's seen around, he's seen Park City change. Uh, part of, you know, some of those changes were inspired and directly implemented by Dana. So my producer was a big fan of Dana even before I came here and met him. So we, we just like clicked and we said, yes, we're going to do it. And talk a little bit about your other project that you've been spending time for a while now in Colombia, as I understand. True, yeah. So uh, my other projects, so these are the two projects I'm working on. Um, it is part of it takes place in Colombia in northern region of Caratumbo, which is by the border between Colombia and Venezuela. And part of it is um, in the States. So basically, I'm just opposing two women. One is a female coca grower from Colombia. And another is a female, uh, formerly incarcerated former drug user from the Bronx. So I'm just showing how uh, stories of these two women and uh, their hardships, um, how they have many more similarities than we would normally think. And then also speaking of you know the war on drugs and the need for drug policy reform here in the states um, and globally, of course, these two categories, bottom level producers and bottom level users, are at the you know opposite ends of this you know hideous arc that is the war on drugs. 
and how basically these are the most abused categories while everyone else makes all the money, everyone else, ev else you know, gains. These are people who go to jail whose life is already hard enough and that what brings them where they are in the first place, you know, hardships of their life. And it feels like in 2016, we, and when I say we, I guess I kind of mean me, but my, my sense that, that we as a culture have come quite a ways in, in starting to be able to envision what this arc, as you so aptly put it, is like and, and, and what all of the points are on that line as far as the cost and, and the tragedy of the way that drug policy is here in the United States Absolutely. of America and, and of course, well-intentioned, but not really supported by I don't even know about, well, you know, well intentions. And you know, honestly, the more I'm learning about it, the, the more I'm uh, kind of horrified and disappointed. And as uh, if in the beginning, I first wanted to just make a documentary on the growers because I was introduced to them. I was like, oh, such a not nice, neat story. Um, I need to sure. you know, tell these people's story. The more I was learning in the process of making the film, the more it was clear that I need to talk about the entire picture and I can't just speak about Colombia without the framework of the entire world or at least the Americas and US's money going into, you know, being pumped into war on no drugs question. in no incredible amounts annually. Um, so, and also... And also with no discernible change in usage exactly. or any of the yeah, associated like statistics. years of the war on drugs, uh, you know, implemented, we only have waste of money, no change. It may be increasing, so negative change. And, you know, prisons are filled with, with people, mass incarceration in the States. It's insane. The States is, you know, has, uh, United States have 5% of world population and 25% of world prison population. That's ridiculous. And why? Of course, among other things, because of prison industry complex because it's just very profitable business. Absolutely. Because to have person in jail in average randomly uh, amounts to the same probably amount as to send them to college or even more expensive. Yet we choose to send people to jail instead of educate them and take care and of them. Warehouse them. And people make money off of it. Like that's brilliant. That's horrible, brilliant system. Indeed. What's your completion date? Do you have a uh, an arc? <laughs> for for oh when you finish, or is this the? Oh yeah! <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Terry. <laughs> yeah, let's use arc and any metaphor now. That's oh. right. Well, and I, I I'm thinking specifically of I'm sure that you know Penny Lane, who did Nuts was at the mm -hmm. at the festival this year, and I think she was six or seven years working on that film. So. Uh, so I've hopefully. learned over the years <laughs> that sort of the uh, gestation period for a documentary film is a little bit different than for your typical yeah, feature film. Yeah, I think it, it varies from film to film, of course, and from documentary to documentary and story to story. But um, I'm hoping to wrap up this fall, uh, and that's what I'm working on, and that's why I'm here, in fact, to shoot some more, because now I made in this whole bit about veil controversy, yes, because last course. time I was here to film the protest, and then in a few days, Danny calls me and he says, well, guess what? They called me on Saturday morning after, you know, Wednesday to protest, right. and they're pulling out the application. Park City wins. Amazing. Easiest win ever. <laughs> Crazy, huh? It's really impressive, isn't it? It I is. Was amazing. Hey, let's take a break, and I want to talk a little bit about this transition from journalism to filmmaker and kind of how that has affected your life. Yeah, right on. Uh, you want to take about it now? Yep, we're okay. going to break. No, we're going to break. And we'll talk about that when we come back. Okay, sounds good. All right, you guys, more with Xenia Grubstein after this. Please stay tuned. Welcome back. We are chatting with one of my favorite people from my entire tenure here at Park City Television, a la the Sundance Film Festival, but she spends a lot more time in Park City nowadays than she used to, and we are all the better for that. This is a film producer, journalist, writer, author, Xenia Grubstein. Welcome back. Hey. Hey. <laughs> So I, I was curious about, you were talking before we came on camera about a very famous actor, perhaps the most famous actor, <laughs> who you interviewed, I guess earlier this year, this spring, and you were mentioning that as you've written for a lot of Russian publications, you've interviewed tons of people in a, a print journalism print format or, yeah, or context. Yeah, I do both print and TV. But now this 
I, I, I kind of think of it as sort of like what I do here. It's very small. It's very self-contained. So it's always very manageable. I know, you know, I know what's going to happen. And our format is fairly standard from day to day. But producing a film, a completely different set of logistics to going and meeting up with somebody for uh, an hour or whatever period of time, if it's a I little reach, more in They depth. gave us an hour every time we do anything. Oh, yeah, exactly, like exactly, exactly. Time. I got five minutes with Jack Nicholas. Right and I was like, thank you so much for the five <laughs> minutes, for sure. Yeah, yeah definitely. That's, um, I feel like it was, it was kind of cumulatively worked out, because I've been doing journalism since I was 17. I just wanted to like write and you know do TV segments. And I was always about it. I guess I wanted to tell stories. I did not think about it that way, but right. I was just into it. And I've been doing this for years and years and years um, until eventually I worked, um, before I moved to the States, I worked in Russia at a TV show about filmmaking. So where I would get to interview the stars, local stars, international stars, and talk to them about the process. And I never saw myself as a, as a film critic because I feel like you need to know a lot about stuff to be able to critique it. And so it <laughs> Obviously, you don't know very many <laughs> critics. <laughs> it yeah, it doesn't make sense to me like personally. So sure. I would write about it and see how the creative process goes and how they interact with the actors and you know what they're trying to say rather than critique their films. Um, and then it was kind of a natural transition into filmmaking. And I wanted to um, do like a, I was applying at some, at some point to Berlin, Berlinale Talent Campus, which is during Berlin Film Festival, they have this thing for like young aspiring directors and uh, people. I didn't get in or like somehow it didn't work out, but I think the intention was there. Kind of like the Sundance Institute kind of thing. Probably, yeah, just, just the German German kind. Um, and then eventually, I, since I was here with the Pussy Riot documentary in 2013, um, it was, of course, a great way to meet people, to network, to pitch your stories. And I had a couple of stories, of course. Uh, so <laughs> when I saw that you know those particular producers I would like to work with, with um, I always wanted to kind of, bottom line, I got introduced, I talked to them, I pitched my story, they liked it. Um, so I've been working. I've been able to work on my documentaries since it's because fantastic. of that amazing connection. Yeah, I'm really grateful. I've been honestly really fortunate in in what I'm trying to do and being able to do it. I really like it. When you're here in Park City, you seem to fly solo pretty much. As far as I see you with the camera, you're shooting, your storytelling in your mind. <laughs> Obviously, that's not the way that. Everybody does it. I mean, even in documentary film, things get bigger, the logistics, the production, the setups, all that sort of thing. Is that a, a direction that you're going? Do you like sort of being lean and mean? What's happening in, in Colombia and in New York with the storytelling there? Are you, right. are you kind of the same yeah, I kind of the lone same, wolf? Yeah, because I. <laughs> yeah, Senior no, Grubstein, <laughs> lone wolf. Ooh, no one ever told me this. You're the first there. Thank you. That's why you're I love welcome. You. That's why I love you. Um, anyway, so I started doing my Colombia project in a more traditional way so I would hire a camera person I would hire a what kind of on on set producer slash interpreter I would like maybe have a, two people to three people with me but then eventually also I learned more and understand more Spanish I realized that it's harder but it's easy at the same time if you kind of control everything because right. Then, if you're supposed to, you know how it is. <laughs> you might know it too well. Uh, how like certain things you wish you could rely on people and know what you have as a result. But then often I would kind of not have that result. I would be sure. gone back from the set. Uh, I'm trying to, you know, see what we shot. And in this, in the middle of a very important interview, like camera does, woo, like this. I'm like. Great. We can't go back. We can't reshoot it. Right. I was relying on my camera person, right. not to point any fingers. Yeah, of course, um, of course. Yes. Yeah, so then eventually, of course, it's hard to do, you know, both sound, camera, be the directors, be the producer at the same time, uh, understand Spanish if it's in in Colombia. Right. But um, it's kind of it's worth it. I feel like it's 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 great, but it's hard, but it's great. It's hard, but it's great. <laughs> well, and I suppose it takes more time to do it that way, but but in the end, it really is. And I, I don't mean this. Does. I don't mean this <laughs> to give you a hard time, but, but it is. It's about control. You maintain control. And in the end, the, the viewer who sits down to, to consume your film it doesn't care how nice you were right. to 
the, the grip or the sound man or anything <laughs> like that. You just have to have a, a, a great piece of art for the film festivals. Exactly. It also comes from, because I used to work as a you know, TV uh, reporter and TV producer before, so it's it kind of the same skill you just expanded, sort of, uh, on kind of more international level, and documentary mentality is different from TV. Absolutely. Uh, that's a challenge, by the way, to switch from TV into I bet. documentary. <laughs> it's great to see you. Good to see you, too. Always my pleasure. Thank you for being here. You're just here for a couple of days this time? I am. And I hope we get to hang out. Yes. As always. Thank you so much. Uh, where should folks go online to find out more about, about your films, about the things that you're working on now? Actually, very handily, thanks for mentioning that. I yes. have three shorts that are part of the Colombian project um, that are online and released already, which also just got into Harm Reduction Film Festival right. later this fall in San Diego in November. Thanks so much. That's amazing. Um, so, th like, if you'd look, I guess my name is Inia Grabstein, or if you'd look for Peace and Kolka, so it's Peace and the sign, Kolka. Um, it's like short trilogy um, on YouTube. So I guess if you combine Peace and Kolka with my name, you should get them on YouTube. Fantastic. <laughs> Great to see you. Thanks Thank for you coming. Today. Let's let's make this a regular thing. Absolutely. If you come in town, <laughs> next time don't here. come on the Mountain Views program. <laughs> we got beef. Just saying. All right. I'll Great see you next see time. You. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> Let's take a break. Lots more music to come here on the Mountain Views program. It's the Troubled Youth Blues Band from the Music Garage. Stay tuned. They're going to rock it out even harder.